In a surprise move, the Georgia District Attorney prosecuting former President Trump's elections case will not take the stand again after heated testimony yesterday. The state says they have no further questions for Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis after she called allegations that she engaged in misconduct lies. The judge has said she could be disqualified from the case against Trump if evidence shows she financially benefited from a romantic relationship with a special prosecutor she hired for that case. I want to bring in investigative reporter Olivia Rubin outside the court in Atlanta, ABC News contributor and former Georgia prosecutor Chris Timmons uh, for more on this. So, Olivia, Fannie Willis will not take the stand today after all. Now they're waiting to recall Terrence Bradley to the stand. So walk us through what's happening now and what happens next. Well, what happens now is no more Fonnie Willis. She said what she needed to say yesterday, and she's done. I think what we heard from Chris Timmons earlier is probably exactly right, that the state liked what they heard from Fonnie Willis on the stand yesterday, and they don't want to give the defense another opportunity to go at her again with another round of questioning, which they would have the right to do if the state cross-examined her. So Fonnie Willis is done, and what that does is send us in to the rest of the hearing, because though she was the most high-profile and probably the most critical witness, Fonnie Willis was not the only witness that was set to testify at this hearing. And like you said, it now turns to Terrence Bradley. He is the former associate, current attorney of Nathan Wade, who Ashley Merchant, Mike Roman's attorney, has said has evidence to contradict the timeline of when the relationship between Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade allegedly started. And also, Ashley Merchant has said he will contradict their statement that they never lived together. So Terrence Bradley is someone that has been referred to in this courtroom as the star witness for the defense, and he's someone that we haven't been able to get the testimony from because he's either not in the courtroom or refusing to answer questions. So right now it seems they're waiting to get into the courtroom while they go over some proposed questions for him that would seem to get around the issue of attorney-client privilege. But so we're waiting to hear from him, and then Ashley Merchant has said she has another witness ready to go. Then we're still not done, Diane. It goes back to the State who has said they have three to four witnesses to put on. So we were expecting hours and hours and hours more of testimony today. Off to a rocky start this morning. So we'll just have to wait and see which way this weaves and who ultimately ends up taking the stand. Chris, what does it tell you that the state decided not to ask Fonnie Willis any more questions? Uh, Olivia is absolutely right. Um, you know, what, what that tells us is that overnight they looked at her testimony. They made a decision on whether it would help or hurt to bring her back to ask additional questions from the state. And then again, as Olivia mentioned just a minute ago, um, should they subject her to further questioning by the defense on what would be redirect, although you, you typically think of it as a, a recross, given that she's adverse to the other side. And so what they decided was they looked at her testimony, they thought about how well she did, and they they thought that, you know, it's just not going to get any better if Fonnie Willis takes the stand again, and particularly given the risk that the other side could have come up with additional questions that they didn't think of the day before. And so even though the judge oftentimes tries to control the questioning and limit it to only the questions that were asked by the previous party as you as you move forward. Um, in this particular case, there's a danger that there were additional questions out there. But I really think at the end of the day, you know, they looked over her testimony. They thought that she did the two things that they wanted her to do. First, they wanted her to rebut any sort of inference that she either financially benefited or when their relationship started. And second, I think what she did was repair some of the political damage that has been done in this case. That's really what that was about. And Chris, we heard Fonnie Willis say on the stand, you know, I'm not the one on trial here. This case, this this hearing is happening within the confines of this larger case. And the question, of course, is what are the potential outcomes in terms of how it could affect this case against former President Trump and his co-defendants? So what does this mean? What are the potential outcomes here? And what do they mean for that case against the former president and his co-defendants alleged, uh, uh, you know, for alleged election interference? Well, Diane, you're right. I mean, there are a number of factors that are in play here. One is ultimately the issue that's the subject of this hearing, and that is should Fonnie Willis be disqualified from the case? And if Fonnie Willis is disqualified, that means her entire office is disqualified at that point, including all of the special prosecutors involved. So that would be disastrous for the state. That puts that case, this case in a limbo and probably ends it, at least for the time being. It could be a year or more. If you look at the other case that they were disqualified from, which was Burt Jones, he was originally going to be 
one of the defendants in this case, uh, but the DA's office was uh, ultimately disqualified from prosecuting him. That case has gone nowhere, even though it's been almost a year since that disqualification. And so we could be in that same situation here with regard to the Trump case. But even if it proceeds, and that's what Brian and I both are predicting that this case, and also Olivia, that this case is going to move forward, that we think that it's going to continue to be prosecuted. Uh, but there's been a lot of damage, which John mentioned earlier as well, a lot of damage done to the state's case. I mean, people, when they hear that there's a problem with the investigation, they think, well, then there must be a lack of evidence against the person at the end of the the, the case uh, on the on the other side of the V, on the defendant. And so they're thinking if there's a problem with the prosecutors, there's got to be a problem with the investigation, and that's got to be uh, mean that that the defendants in the case are not guilty, even though both things can be true. There can be an issue with the investigation, and there can be uh, that the defendant is guilty. But at the same time, in terms of the battle and that's going to ultimately happen in this case when we get to trial, if the DA's office in Fulton County is still involved in the case, that's going to cause some mistrust among some of the potential jurors. All right, Chris Timmons, Olivia Rubin, thank you both. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.